No following, no preaching. Go down and miss, no secrets. Good to talk to you, Andy. How you doing? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for being with us today. Um, well, 2020 was a bit of a sour year in terms of results for you. You fought twice last year, two split decisions that didn't go your way against great opponents. But this doesn't seem to affect your stock at the moment. Uh, how does the current skid uh, affect your approach in this rematch against Ashley Joder? Is this something you keep in mind or does your confidence takes over and shepherds you wherever you need to go? Um, I, I think, uh, if anything, I feel like it, the last two losses are forcing me to be a more dynamic fighter and not just, um, not just a striker who can, who can get back up and, uh, and, you know, it's, it's hard to accept those losses just because in the moment I felt like I did enough to win. Um, but I feel like in the future is, is those hitting those bumps in the road are just going to make me a much more complete fighter and a much more dominant fighter. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I, I still, I still tell myself like, Hey, don't forget, like those fights were awesome fights because it's so easy as a fighter to, to dwell on, um, dwell on your record or dwell on a win or a loss just based on what a judge said that it is. And it's easy to lose that confidence in your ability because it's like, well, that was a great performance, but this judge said it was a loss. So now, I, so now I'm mad at the performance. Uh, so a lot of times when I say, oh, I'm on a seven fight, win streak, I'm on a five fight, win streak is really just me telling myself like, Hey, don't doubt yourself. Know that you're improving, know that you're getting stronger. You're on the right path. You just got to keep making those adjustments, keep doing what you've been doing. And eventually no one will be able to beat you. Uh, so I think that's what I took mostly is, um, you know, just, just forcing myself to attack in different positions, not just stay striking, not just be one dimensional, but um, just really mix up my game and uh, and yeah, use everything. Well, you're taking this fight on one week's notice like a gangster. You've said that <laughs> you're inspired by guys like Cowboy Cerrone and his willingness to take on all comers. Can you talk about the mental approach needed to engage in those situations and describe a bit of how you live this moments personally? Uh, it's like that YOLO mentality, right? <laughs> uh, I think I think we were saying it when we were kids. But um, yeah, you you live every day like it's your last. You never know what's gonna happen. If anything, 2020 showed us that like this, we're 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 barely surviving as a species, you know. So um, so why not? Why not go out with a few good memories, a, a few exciting times? The ups and the downs, they they just make the ups bigger, you know. The downs make the ups greater. And uh, and I would regret if I didn't take this opportunity or or all the short notice opportunities that I that I have because I think what if, you know, what if that ended up being a spectacular performance? What if that was the one that catapulted me on my next win streak that got me to the title shot? So I've never, um, just because I've always stayed uh, active and I always train, I have a, I have a gym in my garage now. So like, even when, when my gym gets shut down, I have somewhere to train, um, like, the, just the fact that I'm always prepared makes it simply a mental shift. Like, it's not like I'm not in shape to fight. I just have to be mentally ready to fight. And I feel like uh, whenever I get those opportunities, I just say yes, because like, why not? What's what's the worst that could happen? I lose the fight, big deal, you know? But the best thing that could happen is I win, I make some money, I get a bunch of great memories. I get to show everyone how good I am as a fighter. And uh and yeah, it just keeps making my stock rise. So, um, so yeah, I'm willing to take risks like that just because the reward's so high. Hearing you talking about this makes me realize that you and Kawi could actually do really cool things together on a podcast sometime. <laughs> People keep telling me to talk that. to Cowboy. Uh, hook up. Oops, sorry. Hook up the uh, <laughs> the call. I can kind of ride a horse. <laughs> yeah, well, you've done a lot of media work for the promotion and in your own social media this last time. Um, I want to congratulate you on that because I really enjoy your conversations with Karen Bryant. Um, Thank you. No problem. Could you tell me uh, how does this uh, dimension of the fight game have served you to grow as a fighter yourself? Um, I, I think uh, just diving into people's past and 
seeing their journey from from uh, maybe winning one, losing one, winning one, losing one, to just going on a streak and dominating and and then realizing that people don't even remember that about that fighter. They're like uh, win and loss, win and loss, like their ups and downs. Once you're on top, people just know, hey, man, you're on top and you're great. And you put on some great performances recently. So so it is cool to just look into um, people's careers and, and just see how they've evolved and how they've gotten better and how they never gave up. And it gives me hope for myself, for my own career in the future. And uh, it's cool. Like every now and then I'll be watching tape and I'm like, ooh, that's a nice move. I'm going to try that, you know? And then I go to the gym and try it and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But it gives me a lot to work with. And I think I think uh, a lot of fighters don't study tape um, just to study it, like study other people's fights, not necessarily someone that you're fighting. Um, and I think I think it's actually a really good thing for a fighter to do mentally is just studying, watching people who do things better than you and you try to mimic that, asking questions with your coach, like, hey, I saw this cool move, how do you do it? Or can you break it down for me? Like all that stuff has really helped me in my fight game and just allowed me to uh, take different paths that I wouldn't necessarily take if I didn't have a coach, if I only had a coach telling me what to work on. Um, so that's that's been a cool part of uh, studying too, is just like getting that confidence um, with seeing every other everyone else's journey, especially the people who are where you want to be now, and um, and also just stealing their moves. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, Angie. Best of luck in your fight on Saturday. Thank you.